What's the difference between the Muslim and the Jews? Really speaking, no difference. In the concept of the divinity, concept of God. The Jew says, God Almighty is absolutely unique. He has no partners, he has no sons. God is not seen at any time. No man can see God and live. And we give our hand of acceptance to the Jew that we believe as we believe. The Jew says, no eating of the flesh of swine. We say, we won't eat it. He says, no eating of blood. We say, we won't touch it. He says, circumcision. We say, we are circumcised. What more do you want? <laughs> no, no, what more do you want, man? <laughs> I would say that Islam is Judaism made universal. It's the same religion on a universal level. We accept all the Jewish prophets as our prophets and all the heroes as our heroes. I'm not talking about the modern ones. With them, we are at war. <laughs> No, no. We, we are proud to read the Holy Quran and say, Bismillah ar-Rahman. Wa qatala Dawudu jaluta wa atahu Allahul mulka wal hikmata wa allamuhu mimma yasha. Aren't you happy to read that? Huh? You have any qualms about that? Wa qatala Dawudu jaluta and David killed Goliath. Who is David? Jew. Who is Goliath? Palestinian. Look, this Jew killed a Palestinian and you are happy. Huh? Look at it. So Allah says, وَقَتَلَ دَعُدُ جَالُوتَ وَأَتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْمُلْكَ Allah gave him dominion, وَالْحِكْمَةَ and wisdom, وَأَلَّمَهُ مِمَّا يَشَاءَ And whatever else he will. We are happy. Hazrat Musa a.s. is my prophet. Dawud a.s. is my prophet. Suleiman a.s. is my prophet. Up to a certain age, I didn't know that these are the prophets of the Jews. Wallah. And some of my children, I don't know about you American Muslims, how much you know. But... If you ask my children in South Africa, who is, who is Musa alayhi salam? He's my prophet. Who is Dawud alayhi salam? My prophet. Who is Suleiman alayhi salam? My prophet. Who is Isa alayhi salam? My prophet. He's not thinking he's a Jew, he's a Jew, he's a Jew. Well, we're not thinking that they are Jews. We're thinking they are the righteous servants of Allah. And as such, we love them, respect them, revere them. As we say, follow them. No fight, no fight. We accept all the Jewish prophets as our prophets. The only problem is they won't accept one of ours. That is the irony. We accept all the prophets. <laughs> and Allah tells us in the Quran that he's given us a deen confirming what is already with you. Nothing new, man. Nothing new. It's the same religion, universal level. What's with them now? I said, you see, the Arab world needs you. Look, I don't know. There might be some brothers here, extremists, now should be that. This guy is a traitor. You know, I'm trying to tell you to sell out. Sell out. No, no, no. No, my brothers and sisters. This is my stand from the very beginning. I have been telling the Palestinians, I said, look, open a second front. Open a second front against the Jew. Russia, Second World War, when Germany attacked Russia, 2,000 kilometers nonstop. German soldiers marched, 2,000 kilometers nonstop. And she's crying for second front, second front, open a second front, man. You know, you from Europe, from somewhere, open against the Germans, a second front to... To, to decrease this pressure on them. And it suited these guys to allow them to let them die. 22 million Russians died in the Second World War. You know, this guy suited them to say, weaken that country too. They'll do it, but second front. I said, now open a second front against the Jews. Where? How? From Syria? From Jordan? Hmm, not, I'm not talking about military. I said, yeah, militarily, I can't advise you anything. If you're throwing stones, I can't tell you how to throw better stones. Hmm? I won't tell you, no, why don't you take up the gun? No, I'm not qualified. Well, I'm not qualified to give you advice. What you're doing, carry on. But open a second front. So what do you mean second front? I said, an intellectual battle. Talk, man, talk. Talk to the guy. Reason with the people. I said, look, this is what the Jewish claim is. And let's analyze it. Let's analyze Genesis chapter 17, verse 8. See, what does it say? He said, I will give you and your seed after you. Talk to the Americans. Talk to them. Say, look, sir, look, you haven't understood. He says, seed. Who are the seed of Abraham? This is Isaac, Jew. I said, look, read, man. Your book, your Bible says 12 times. Ishmael is the son and seed. Ishmael is the son and seed of Abraham. How can you deny him that birthright? Talk to him. His, 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 his. Stubbornness, his resistance will lessen. The Jew, talk to him. These guys, men, I tell you, they are reasonable people. I'm talking to these students. Then I said, you see, what is going to happen then? They, at the back of the mind, 
they can realize it can happen. One day, they can lose a battle. They can't say they'll win forever. One day you lose the battle and then it's finished for you. Why wait for that? Why not come to terms? I said, you see, the Arab world needs you. I don't know whether you call it psychology or what, diplomacy. I said, the Arab world needs you. You are a new heart in the body of the Arab world. But when you transplant a new heart into a body, that Chris Barnard in my country, the first guy to have this heart transplants, he discovered and he told the world that the body wants to reject the heart. There's a fight going on. You put on a new heart into any body, that body is going to put up a fight. So they have to drug the body, drug the body, drug the body, till the body so senses are, uh, let it remain there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you make that body to accept that new heart. You know that? But the body wants to fight. It's a foreign matter. Reject it. Kick it out. And in the process, the body is going to kill the heart and the body will also die. I said, you are a new heart in the Arab world. The Arab world needs you. And you need the body. You need the body and they need a the heart. Had it not been for you, the Arab world would have been sleeping, the sleep of slumbering for centuries, decades. You know, smoking away the hookah. But look, what's happening there? In the Arab world, wallah, they're waking up. Industrialization. Wheat. Saudi Arabia produces wheat supplying to Russia. Wheat. A desert country supplying wheat. I have seen grapes and melons growing in the desert. You can't imagine. Wallah, you can't imagine. This Saudi Arabia, the, the desert land. What's happening there? I said, it's not, it's, had it not been for the Jews, all these things wouldn't have happened. The Jews are waking you up. He's waking up the Muslim world. So we need the heart, new heart. But the body doesn't recognize the heart. So I said, look, easy solution. I sound very simplistic at times. But Allah, some of these truths are so simple you can't imagine. You just can't imagine how simple solutions can be. We are looking for complicated solution. The body is going to reject the heart. In the process, the body will die. They're killing one another. We can kill, keep on killing one another. So the body is destroyed and the heart is destroyed. I said, you see, the reason is because the cellular construction of the heart is different from the cellular construction of the body. The body is Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. Every cell is Muslim, 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 Muslim. The heart is Jew, 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 Jew. Every cell of the heart is Jew, 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 Jew. So this body can't recognize that this, this heart is a, a friend. It's come to help him. Mm, you can't see that. He's going to fight and going to destroy the heart and destroy itself in the process. So I said, man, you change the label. Change the label. And there's no copyright on the label. Do you know that? Muslim. A Jew becomes a Muslim. Is there a copyright? You say he can't become Muslim? Is there a copyright? There's no copyright. So I said, look, become a Muslim. Accept Islam, you know, accept Islam. And man, the body and the, uh, sorry, the heart will be compatible to one another. At question time, the Jews are very brilliant people. I like, I like, I like to talk to them. You see, they put up a good fight. I like that. The younger generation, come and put up a good fight. I like a good fight. But when you conquer him with the intellect, that guy, he agrees with you and he's prepared to fight for you. That's a university student. You convince him that, look, this is it. And objectively, you present the case in humility. Not that we'll do this to you and we'll do that to you. I said, look, this is a solution to the problem. Your, body, your heart is Jew, Jew, Jew. And the body is Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. And there is no copyright on the label. Why don't you change your label? What is the difference? Really, there's no difference. The only thing is that they don't accept our Nabi Karim. We accept all the Jewish prophets as our prophets, all the heroes as our heroes. Only they won't accept one of ours. That is the biggest problem. So, you accept Islam, change the label, problem is solved. So, at question time, one Jewish student, he said, why don't you change your label? <laughs> no, no, that's that. I like that. I like that, you know. Mm. They come fighting. They don't just, uh, whatever you say, say, ditto, ditto, ditto. No, no. So why don't you change your label? I said, look, I don't mind. Look, that's me. I said, I don't mind changing my label. I don't know what you would say. I don't know. But I said, look, I don't mind. But you see, if I want to change my label, you're going to put hurdles in my way. I know that. Make it difficult for me. You don't want to accept me as a Jew. 
But even if I succeed, I'm still a third grade Jew. But let's say, what happens? I said, how many are you in the world today? How many? So one guy said, 15 million. I said, right. So we become 15 million and one. Right? I change my label, I become a Jew. So how many we are now? 15 million and one. Okay? I said, you have a product. You are a business people. For which you have a market of 15 million. As soon as you change your label, we are 1,000 million. 1,000 million customers you get. You are a bloody fool if you didn't change the label. And when there's no, there's no copyright on the label. Being a Muslim, is there a copyright? So now, so there is no copyright on it, man. And you're a business people. Come on, man. You want to do business. They want to do business. All this is happening, whatever the compromise is, because of business. Not the throwing of the stones. Business. They want to do business. Man, they want to make money. This is, to me, this is what the whole secret of the Jew, you know, trying to say, all right, we'll give you a bit of West Bank and we'll give you a bit of Gaza and all that. This is all business. They want to do business. They're getting strangulated in business. They want to do business. A thousand million Muslims will buy. What a fantastic opportunity for business. They'll be the topmost people in the Middle East. The richest people in the Middle East will be the Jews. They want to do business. So I said, right, you have a product for which you have a market of 15 million. You change the label and you get a thousand million customers. You are a bloody fool if you don't change the label. They see that. That's right. Another guy comes forward. He said, who will do the job? Who will do this job? He, he, bought, he bought the idea. He said, right, this is a great idea. And they are talking. They are talking. They, must, they need another alternative other than the gun. There are good people among them. Wallah, there are. Abe Nathan. He's been going to prisons again and again, talking to the Palestinians. Abe Nathan. Sabra and Shatila massacre. 300,000 Jews. They marched in Tel Aviv to the house of Begin with placards. It says, Begin and Sharon, there's blood on your hands. Resign. 300,000 Jews they gathered after the Sabra and Shatila massacre. No Muslim nation on earth, man. No capital ever did any such thing like that. The Jews did it. Said, Begin. And Sharon, there's blood on your hands. Resign. No, there are good people. Allah says, Min humul mu'minuna wa humul fasikun. Why don't you learn to talk to the guy? Talk to him, man. Talk to him. And you see, uh, uh, to me, I don't think that Allah has installed at their destruction. There must come along a time that we will come have a report between the Muslim and the Jew. The Jews will become Muslim, inshallah. And we can work together. <laughs> no, don't say I'm a sellout. What Arafat is doing, I said, look, I can't tell you. I can't give you advice. Don't ask me questions whether it's right or wrong. I said, look, to me, to me, it's an opportunity for talking. I want to talk. I want to go to Israel. I want to talk to the Jews. I said, your prophet Moses, the greatest man, in his last and final revelation in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 18, he says, Navi akim lahim mikariv achayhim. That's his Hebrew. That's Hebrew. Navi Akim Lahim Mikariv Achayhim Kamukhawina Tati before we debir us. Who is this prophet? In Arabic it says, Ukimu Lahum Nabiyam Mim Wasate Ikwatim Mitlaka. Waja Lukalami fi famihi Faja Kalam Humbikulima Usibihi. In the Song of Solomon, chapter five, verse sixteen, he says, Hikko Mamit Takim, we kullo Muhammadim, Zehdudi, Zehrei Bainat Yerushalam. Who is this Muhammadim? In your book, in the original Hebrew, Muhammadim, Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. Talk to him. And to me, I want an opportunity to go and talk to him. And I want you all to talk to him. Talk to him, man. Give him that opportunity to reject. And then let Allah do the job. You do your job. You deliver your message. And then if the guy is still resistant, then leave it to Allah. But talk, man. Talk. So this is my message to my brothers and sisters. We have to learn to talk. To the Jews, to the Christians, to the Hindus, to the atheists, and the agnostics. With everybody, you must find ways and means of getting to their heart. This is the awal fard of the Muslim. Long before Salat, Zakat, Hajj, and Saum became fard, Allah tells his Rasul, and through him he is telling us, he says, innama anta muzakir. He says, you, you deliver the message. Because it is your duty to deliver the message. Lasta alayhim be musaitir. You will not be questioned regarding them. Illa man tawalla wa kafar. Why they accepted or why they didn't accept, Allah won't ask you. He will ask you, did you deliver the message? And if he can honestly say, Ya Barit Allah, oh my Lord, we tried. 
to the best of our ability, whether it was great or small, good enough. Allah will say, my Jannah is open for you. But can we say that we have tried? That is all, my dear brothers and sisters. We say, learn to talk, learn to open your mouth, learn to share. Ha, says, who will do the job? I said, you will do the job. The Jew is asking, who will? I said, you. Get off from my chest. The Arab, you're sitting on our chest. Get off and give your hand. He says, brother, brother, look, please forgive us. What can we do? Where can we go? We are sorry for what all these things that has happened. Tell him and watch the Arab. I says, he will shed tears and accept you. This is, to me, this is the Arab. This is his nature. Ghulam and Halima, Allah is describing. He's Ghulam and Halima. I have seen it happen again and again. Up to 12 o'clock midnight. Cairo Radio is broadcasting against King Faisal. You know, he's at you know, all, the, all the kinds of words that they use, political words, you know, that's a bloody rubbish, you know. He's like this and like that. Till midnight, 12 o'clock, Cairo Radio is blasting away. And Nasser sends a message. Faisal, come over. I want to talk to you. And Faisal comes along. They meet on the tarmac in Cairo. <laughs> and they embrace one another and they cry. <laughs> They're shedding tears. as a bloody hypocrite. No, no. This is the nature of the Arab. Up to midnight, the guy was out to kill you. Now, he said, brother, you know, the Jews, 67 war. The Jews, you know, they're preparing to attack us. And, uh, what can you do? Uh, you embrace one of them. <laughs> <laughs> King Hussein of Jordan, same. Cairo radio is bl blasting away. You know, they, oh, what they call them, all kinds of names. Hmm? Want to destroy the jo King Hussein. And Nasser calls King Hussein and he comes and they meet in the tarmac and Nasser and Hussein and they embrace one of them and they cry. Stay. I'm telling you, this is this Arab. Talk to him, man. Talk to him. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I have taken so much more time than what was supposed to speak. May you people have mercy on me. Forgive me for being over talkative. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.